Welcome to XCAMP 2023, uh, February USACO solution discussion. Uh, this is Charlie Guo. I'm the co-founder and the principal of XCAMP. Uh, today, uh, we will, I will give you a quick introduction about XCAMP. Uh, then we will give you the USACO contest tutorial. Uh, after that, we will give you an introduction on our classes and how to prepare next USACO. Uh, XCAMP is a Silicon Valley based coding academy. We have classes from beginner to master and to IOI level. Uh, our curriculum will are uh, developed by seasonal coaches, including IOI medalists, USACO veterans, etc. Uh, we have proven record. Uh, we provide solid knowledge um, on data structure and algorithms uh, for the students. We have been four USACO campers in the last season. Uh, for this season, we have two students uh, joined top 10 uh, in the platinum division. Um, for our coding problem, and the solutions. Uh, we provide beginner level uh, for the kids to love coding. Uh, then we provide algorithm and the data structure foundations for the students to have complete knowledge. After that, some students might go to competitions. Uh, some of you uh, may follow this direction. Uh, some of you might uh, do more coding as engineer in academia or industry um, to have some lower bound of your life uh, skills to be a software engineer. Uh, today, uh, for the bronze session, we have Max. Uh, he's the, uh, our USACO Grandmaster class coach, also the ICPC world finalist. Uh, in the ICPC finished last week, uh, their team, they're the top one, uh, I think, in the Southwest uh, America. Uh, now, I would like to turn the uh, uh, screen uh, class uh, to Max now. Uh, Max, turn to you. Yeah, thank you, Charlie. Let me share my screen. Okay, so let's begin by talking about the first problem from uh, the Usico Bronze contest. The first problem was about um, it's about Farmer John giving hay bales to cows, and the idea is that um, there are a bunch of days. There are T days, and on each day there is um. So we have a uh, say day. So we have a bunch of uh, we have a bunch of inputs of the form. Uh, yeah, we have a bunch of inputs of the form D I and B I, which means that on day D I, um, there will be B I hay bales added to like some sort of supply, and then each day, uh, Bessie will try to eat a hay bale if possible. So basically, each day. So on each day. So if um I guess you can say if the amount of hay bales is like is like greater than if there is at least one hay bale, then Bessie will eat one. And then also if there's a if the, if it's on like day DI, then we get plus BI hay bales. And so the question is throughout these entire T days, how many hay bales does Bessie end up eating? So one idea is we could so one idea is we could go through, we go through each day, right? Let's say we start with day one. If there are no hay bales, then Bessie doesn't eat a hay bale. Day two, day three, day four, we just go through every single day. And then let's say we reach, uh, let's say there is an input. Let's say the first input is, let's, give an, let's do an example here. So one example we have is, uh, let's say we have two inputs. There's one, two, meaning that on day one, there are two hay bales added. And uh, five, 10, meaning that on day five, 10 hay bales are added. Then what happens is, on day one, so this is day, so these are, let's go ahead and go here now. These are the days. So on day one, uh, there, are, there are two hay bales added, and then Bessie will eat one. So that, that is a, that's, so therefore, uh, Bessie has eaten one hay bale so far. On the next day, there is one hay bale left. Bessie will eat one again. So now there's two hay bales left. On the next day, on day three, there are no hay bales available. So Bessie will not eat a hay bale. And the same for day four, there was no hay bales. And then we get to day five. On day five, we have an input that says we get plus 10. Right? And then Bessie will eat one. So now Bessie eats another hay bale. So that's kind of how the process goes. So we go through each day 
And then if there is an input that says at uh, this on this day, we will, we're going to add a BI hay bales. Let me just add it. So like some sort of counter, some sort of variable. So we have some like counter that keeps track of how many hay bales we have total. And each day we add BI to it if there's an input for that. And then we subtract one if it's greater than zero and add one to our answer. This is a little bit too slow because the T, this total number of days could be at most 10 to the 14. So this is um, an O of T solution will be iterated over every single day. It will be a little too slow. So this is O of T. So let's try to make this a little bit faster. And to make this a little faster, we simply note that on a lot of the days, we are, because there are at only at most N inputs, right? N inputs, where N is much smaller. N is up to 10 to the 5. So... Um, yeah, so that so a lot of the days we're not actually receiving any new hay bales, so we know exactly what's going to happen, which is that we simply minus one, minus one, minus one, and so on. So we don't have to really like simulate every single day. We can instead skip to whenever new hay bales are added, to new hay bales are added, and that's all. Those are the only cases where something changes. Otherwise, we know we just subtract like as many days as we can. So to be more precise, day D one. On, on day D1, we get plus B1. So before that, any day before D1, we have no hay bales because we didn't start with any. So there's nothing added to our answer. Then when we get to D2 and plus B2, we know that in between this time, in between this time, there were D2 minus D1 days. And so we basically, we basically say that, okay, and between those days, we had B1 hay bales total. So if B1 was greater than or equal, is was greater than or equal to D2 minus D1, then we are able to eat a hay bale on each day. So we simply add D2 minus D1 to our answer, and then we subtract that much from our supply. So this is add to here. This is add to answer, and then subtract from our supply. And the other case, what is the other case? The other case is when B is less than D2 minus D1, then what happens? Well, we're not going to have hay bales on every single day. We're going to run out before the days, before the days are over. So, but this case is also just, we eat all B hay bales available. So we add B to the answer and then we subtract B from our supply and our supply has, and our supply is zero. We have two answer and from supply. And then when we get to day D2, we just add B2 to our supply, and then we consider D3 and onwards. And so it's the same idea again. And so by doing this, we only have to visit each of the end days where something changes, and then we can just quickly simulate in between by adding the appropriate amount um, to our answer and taking away from our supply. And so this gets us to an O of N solution. Actually, uh, I think we might need O of N log N because we have to sort the initial sort the initial inputs of di and bi. Or actually, we do actually the inputs it guarantees that they're already sorted. Actually, so input the input guarantees. That like D one is less than D two, is less than and so on. So actually, it's just we can just do O of n because uh, they already sorted it for us in the input. So we have an O of n solution, and that will be fast enough to solve all of the test cases. So does anyone have any questions on the first problem? Yeah, perfect. Let's move on to the second problem then. Second problem, what is the situation in the second problem? So we have, you know, we, we essentially have this n by n canvas and a k by k grid or k by k stamp. n by n canvas, k by k stamp. So our canvas, is going to be some square grid, and at the end we want certain certain we want certain cells to be painted or stamped. And we use asterisks in the input. So we have a certain cells 
that we would like to be stamped by the end of this process. And then the stamp is also similar. So the stamp is not of size n, it is of size k, where k can be less than or equal to n. And so our stamp might be, a, maybe let's say it's a two by two size stamp, and it stamps these particular places. And now what we can do is we initially have empty canvas, and we can take this stamp and we can place it on top of somewhere on our canvas, and we can stamp that part. So let's be, if we place it on top of here, then it will paint this cell, this cell, and this cell, because that is the shape of our stamp. Now, I'm also allowed to rotate this stamp. So I can also rotate it so that it looks like, I can rotate this stamp so it looks like this. And then plant it on top of, say, here. So that I'll stamp here, here, and here. And then finally, I can also put a, put a stamp on top of here. I can also stamp here and cover these. As you can notice, that we're allowed to cover the same like the same spot more than once. It's just that for the blank spots, we need to make sure we never cover them because we want to we want to make sure they're blank by the end 